Hello guys, it's me Carl Smith with Cap Carl Method, and welcome to another edition of Forza Horizon 5 Career Mode. So, welcome back guys to my two-part series of Forza Horizon 5 uh, Hot Wheels and Alley Adventure series. So, not much here, but as you saw in the last video, I did a lot of uh, walk hydroplaning <laughs> with my uh, water vehicles and hopefully be the same thing for my Ken Block car that I have or a long time ago that I had right from the I don't know just from the auction block so it seems to me I use this car a lot somehow because it's really efficient and can get me the lead in most rally races and adventure uh, Hot Wheels Adventure Park. So I hope there's many of you that'll view this YouTube channel and realize I'm an up and coming channel, even though I've had a YouTube video for like eight years now and. I'm proud of where I stand, you know, and even though I haven't had a subscriber since, like, New Year's, I do try my best to actually ask you guys to subscribe to my channel, so if you want to, click on that bell notification button, uh, button so you can get all my channels from the past, present, and future from my YouTube channel, have car i 5 so, but otherwise, give a thumbs up button if you like it, share a comment right below the description, so you can share some thoughts and feelings with everybody in the community, and make them feel welcome, so, mm, anyways, this race is not complete, but, I try to eliminate some of the bad parts, so, you can go ahead and watch this video, since it's around. 20 to 25 minutes, so I make it up kind of half. Hope you all have a great day. Peace out.
Come on, let's take this monster for a spin. Careful! Technically, that's more than 1,400 brake horsepower you've got there. As I said, Hot Wheels have always been designed to go really fast on custom track. So, what do you do with the track? Well, you make it in segments so people can build whatever they like. Then you invent a battery-powered booster to shoot cars along the propel the cars. But why stop there? Loops, jump ramps, bank turns, gravity drops, trestle bridges, chicanes, crossovers, lap counters, multi-lane, side-by-side racing launchers. All fully compatible, of course. That's just good engineering. <laughs> They even made an auto shop, a working dyno, and a teeny tiny oil can and wrench to tune up your cars. I played with it. it was... Nice! So why's the track orange? It's like right orange. <laughs> Can't argue with that. As you know, nothing is more exciting than seeing cars racing side by side. Hot Wheels made loads of accessories for this, including launchers for the start line, speedometers to clock the speed of passing cars, and finish gantries that can show which car had won. No cheating allowed! In the 70s, there were dedicated multi-lane track pieces, including the Fat Track, which was three lanes wide and had no dividers for a risky overtake. there's even more fun stuff to play with. You've got figure eight, multi-story garages, there's rubber band kickers, and even giant sharks and dinosaurs that chomp. Why else do you think we've got a giant dragon right here at the park? really fast on plastic track. I give up. Why? So they go further when they jump off the end, of course. <laughs> Come on, let's go. This is going to be epic. <laughs> I'm riding along with you for this bit. Because at 
the Academy will be talking about that one. Hot Wheels history. Meet me here. Snake or mongoose? <laughs> Come on down, I'll explain. <laughs> You're probably wondering what all this snake and mongoose talk is about, right? You take the yellow car, I'll take the blue. I'll explain along the way. You've heard of John Prudhomme and Tom McEwen, right? They were famous NHRA drag racers in the 70s. who had a friendly rivalry going on for years. Uh... John was a four-time National Hot Rod Association champ and most sports ball of famer. He was nicknamed the Snake. And Tom McEwen was another dragster who won the NHRA US Nationals. They called him the Mongoose. They were both well-established racers in their own right. As the two of them competed in the US Nationals over the years, they crossed paths numerous times, which sparked a friendly rivalry between them. Mattel proposed to make a series of toys based on the rivalry between the Snake and the Mongoose. The Hot Wheels sponsorship led to all kinds of drag-themed stuff. and the Big Belter, which launched cars with rubber bands. The Big Belter could even detect jump starts, which is pretty cool, right? These were a smash hit and propelled both Hot Wheels and drag racing to greater levels of fame. Heavyweights were designed to go faster on gravity drops and Sizzlers had little battery-powered motors so you didn't need a launcher. named Paul Tab started drawing six wheel designs like six shooter and open fire. Hot Wheels didn't stop there. There were loads of other innovations like tampo printed patterns on the cars, which no one else was doing. Then you had the Hot Wheels Collector's Club Kit, where you could mail in to get either the Boss Huff, Heavy Chevy, or King Cuda, all with open hoods, big supercharger blowers, and silver paint jobs. Oh, so cool. Wish I'd been around back then. You know what? All this talk about drag racing has given me an idea. The cars in the original Snake vs. Mongoose set were powered by rubber bands. These ones, well, on. How about you and I test them in a drag race? Bring it on, Haley. Let's go. Time to see if that snake has a bite.
coming up on a loop. Keep your car in the middle. Keep your foot down. Let me worry about the physics. Not bad, not bad. I obviously let you in though. Who else am I gonna give the keys to the rip rod? Let's take a beautiful midnight drive from the canyons into the jungle. Watch out for up-cambered roads and... Five, four, three, two, one, go! Flat out, onto gravel. Easy left, then hard right. Water. Medium left, then bumps. Medium right. Easy right. Hard left, then crest. Easy right, then medium left. Hard left. Medium right, into hard right. Then chicken! Easy left. Easy left. Crest. Into hard left. Medium right. Then easy left. right, followed by square right. Medium right, then hard left. Jump, followed by hard right. Hard left. Medium left. right, hairpin right, hairpin left, water, then easy right, easy left, then medium right, water, then hairpin left, left into hard right every left medium right easy right
medium left. Easy right, then medium right. Finish line ahead. This is an asphalt run with long straights, power curves, and some tight corners. Ah, it would be beautiful in daylight. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Flat out, followed by bridge. Hard right. Crest into medium left. Medium left, square right, onto bridge, followed by medium left, medium right, medium left, easy left, followed by bridge. Medium left, followed by hard right. Hard right. Easy left. Easy left, followed by bridge. Easy left. Medium left. Medium left, medium left, then hairpin right. Hairpin left, crest. Medium right, hard right, then medium left, easy left, easy left, followed by bridge, hard right, medium right, into medium left. So I'm coming to the end of my YouTube video right now, so give a thumbs up button if you like the video so much. Click on that bell button to subscribe for more content, and if you saw the recent video interesting, share the comment right below the description so you can share some positive feelings with everybody in the community and make them feel welcome. So I make a happy Corona 5 You all have a great day, and peace out.